Hello everyone and welcome back. So in this video I'm gonna show you how to create something like this. A custom material made, the, made with Aldini and in Material X. So let's jump in. So the first thing we will have a look is on how to create this pattern in here. That will end up creating this bulging effect. On the, this is supposed to be an old mattress so let's start by looking in here we start with a circle then we carve it and save out the bounding box size of, of this curve then I'm copying it a few times using the, the bounding box then placing it in the center now I can box clip so I can extract the, the tiling pattern that's our goal to create a tiling pattern so I'm using the that attribute we saved of the bounding box X and Z then as this is not actually joined I'm creating a polypad then grouping the center points and cutting them so I get this four different shapes and this is our pattern now we need to transform it if we have a look at the size here it's not squared so we need to make it square so we can bake it to a texture so in the transform we take the X size which is the, the largest one and divide it by the Z size which is a smaller one and we target the X uh, Z scale and now that we have um, a square pattern we can save out again the bounding box size of this pattern so we can use it later and we copy it a few times and place it in the center as we have done before because uh, I want to extract to create some geometry from this so now I am sorting the primitive the primitives by proximity to point and in a range I can select the four last primitives that I want to blast then I'm grouping one of the elements and blasting everything else joining the the pads and now I can polyfill it and blast away the curves remesh it and now I want to create a mask so I can create that bulging effect that displacement effect so for that I'm going to group the unshared edges the unshared points I mean and then create a distance along geometry to create the mask from those points and I'm blurring a bit the mask and in a point pop I'm just displacing the with that mask with that distance attribute saving again the bounding box size of this pattern and copying it a few times generating a connectivity for some reason and clipping it again using the bounding box size that we saved in here no, that we saved before and now in order to bake a color map we need obviously to add some color so I chose blue which is an easy color to key and I chose red for this part which I'm gonna cover now so from this pattern we had before I'm cutting all the points cutting, cutting all the primitives by the points so creating separated primitives 
Then in a wrangle I am creating an attribute for every second brim, so we can have a look. So red, blue, red, blue. And from there we can carve by attributes. This is new to all unit 20. You can also blast, but just let's use carve by attribute since we have it now. And then we can sweep and we will have something like this. Then we can box clip everything, give it a color, and this is what we're going to bake to a texture. So for the high res we plug this, and for the low res we can just create a bound as a rectangle, and uh, group the um, some vertices the top vertices so we in the uv flatten we can properly orient the the uvs as you can see i'm using those pinned vertices and that's why i am grouping the vertices then just adding some subdivisions because sometimes it helps for the baking process and in here I'm just baking I am baking the height and the color and I can show you how that looks so this is the color that I baked and this is the displacement which doesn't look like much but if we normalize it or equalize it you can see how it's looking now let's see how to create something like this this stitching pattern so i'm starting with a trace of an image i had and placing it on the ground then I am dividing horizontally along the z-axis I believe yes and what I'm doing in here is taking the z size of the bounding box and dividing it by the number of divisions I want as you can see I have I can change this to 150 or more or less and you can do this for all the axes then I'm grouping the, the inner edges using this mean edge angle dissolving everything I mean I am grouping all these edges and creating curves from that group and then fusing polypad to create single primitives and then resampling it then I can use a polycut to cut all the primitives just like we have done before and in here just instead of using the carve I'm just removing every second prim then sweep it and that's basically it then I can import the, the texture with an attribute from map and since it is so flat you, you won't need much geometry the colors will spre spread out well at least good enough and then I can promote it to primitives to have a better flat shading and that's basically it then you want to add a, a background plane so it doesn't render transparent and then you bake out the in this case i'm baking out a normal and a color map and again the same thing for the for for the low resolution mesh when you're baking 
just using a flat plane you can see how this looks they can be overlapping there's no problem because we have a max stress distance here you can set it to to a value that makes sense so if we have a look at it and show and visualize there's plenty of space to bake out the texture and when you have it baked we can have a look we will have something like this we will have this flowering pattern that I found online and it's okay to use an external file as long as it's at least styleable and you you can manipulate it in a way that fits your needs so that's totally fine to use styleable textures in a procedural workflow and of course we also have the normal map that we baked so it's looking nice no errors of that whatsoever so we can move to shading now so this is our final shader and let's break it down right now so let me connect the unlit material to the surface and we start with the noise We start with this noise that I created by using the unified noise set to whirly and displacing it a bit with the, or disturbing the noise with another one which is a fractal and from there we can import our big textures so first this one in here that is the flower pattern and in order to separate them we can use a separate tree or vector to float and we need to remap them and clamp them somehow to extract the different channels so in this case I want to extract the red and the green and then I'm using that with a color mix so the first one we're colorizing the these leaves and then in the other one we are colorizing the flowers and all of that mixed together we get something like this and also adding a, a background color this beige color as you can see in here and for the the mix I am using the the two the two masks added together Then I'm also adding the stitches, adding some color to the stitches by importing that particular mask that I've picked and then just multiplying the noise on top. And we get something like this. and let's switch to the shader main shader and as you can see for the i am using two normal maps in here so in order to connect them to connect them you can 
create a normal map uh, import the, the image create a normal map and then connect the second normal map to the normal of the first one so I believe I'm using this normal map in here and um, a textile normal map for the for the main color and of course we're using the displacement as you can see in here it's creating this waving effect and also the stitching which is a bit too big but I guess now I won't change it so I that's basically it I hope you have learned something new as always you can get the, the files on my patreon and thank you everyone that is supporting me over there that helps me to continue to create these tutorials and share project files with you guys thank you for watching see you next time